Hi everyone, meteorologist Brian Bennett with the very latest on what's going on with the red tide here in southwest Florida. A lot of folks would like to go to the beach on this Labor Day holiday weekend. I'm going to let you know what's happening in your county and all the way down to your particular beach with the very latest information. Bottom line here, over the past week, the counties that are painted in orange have seen Corinia brevis and the toxins, aka red tide, increase between 5 and 25 percent. So that does include Pinellas County and Hillsborough County, Sarasota and Charlotte have all seen red tide increase a little bit along the shorelines. Manatee County, a bit of good news for you. The concentration of red tide has decreased a little bit. Collier County, you've seen it drop as well, which Collier and Lee, you deserve a bit of a break. You've been dealing with red tide a lot longer than the rest of us have for quite a few months. And again, you are seeing a little bit of a drop in Collier and Lee County. You're remaining pretty much the same. All right, here's a look at all the reports that were taken by the Florida Fish and Wildlife the commission and you can see wherever the red dots are is where we have high concentration of red tide in the water and that includes an area about 10 miles offshore of Pinellas County and the actual red tide concentration at the shoreline of Pinellas County beaches is in the low range Indian Rocks Beach, St. Pete Beach, Clearwater there's a low to background concentration of the Karenia Brevis, head down to parts of Manatee County, including Anna Maria Island. You're looking at a low to medium range concentration of red tide along your shorelines. Sarasota County, still pretty bad in the red, representing high concentrations of Karenia Brevis and the associated toxins. Same thing goes in Charlotte County and Lee County, Sanibel Island area. You're looking at some pretty high concentrations as well and most of your beach locations too and the same thing goes down in collier county quick view of today's satellite this is showing chlorophyll showing where we likely have some algae growing as we speak uh, unfortunately the satellite does not differentiate between good algae and bad algae bad algae is the one that reduce or produces the uh, toxins that can make breathing difficult and re result in some fish kill but it gives you a basic idea of where the algae is growing, which is a large portion of southwest Florida. In fact, 150 miles of coastline right now are being impacted from Collier County all the way to Pinellas County. Where are the red tide blooms going? Well, we have an easterly wind, and due to something called Ekman Dynamics, basically when you have an easterly wind, the water currents actually want to go to the northeast. So we're actually going to see the red tide concentrations increase to the northwest. Follow these little squiggly lines of orange and red here. And basically the bad water is going to go to the northwest. That includes some murky water around Egmont Key, Anna Marie Island. That is going to drift to the northwest over the next couple of days. Same thing goes with the uh, nasty water that's right around the Sarasota area that's going to be drifting to the northwest as well due to an easterly wind. That's not great news with a northerly progression. It's not horrible news. Horrible news would be if we had a northeasterly wind that would bring the plumes and the crania brevis on shore and the associated fish kill as well. Also did want to mention too that I have an oceanographer friend that went out on a boat from the Passagrill area due westward and he said that the concentrations of red tide that he measured 10 miles offshore of Pinellas County are in the high range. That's concerning. That's new over the past week that we have a high concentration that far north. Now on the flip side there's a little bit of good news. The high concentration is at the surface and not through all levels of the water. So we don't have high concentrations of Crania brevis in the medium and lower levels of the water. And what that means is it's going to reduce the amount of fish kill that's occurring because only the, the fish that are in the very top part of the water would be impacted most dramatically, whereas fish that are deeper in the medium and lower levels of the Gulf of Mexico wouldn't be impacted as bad. But 
On the other hand, we are seeing this northwesterly progression, so we could see the medium and lower levels of the water increase with the crania brevis, which would not be good news. Something we'll want to watch for sure. And again, if the winds do turn from the west to the east, that's going to bring the higher concentrations towards the very popular uh, parts of Pinellas County beaches. And that obviously would not be good news because it would bring the associated respiratory problems and the dead fish as well. Fortunately, though, looking at the long range forecast, winds are actually going to want to remain out of the east for the extended time period. So I don't see a shift to a west to east wind in the near future, but obviously something we'll need to continue to keep an eye on. All right, so Labor Day weekend, a lot of folks uh, would normally have plans to head out to the beach. The beaches here that I've kind of highlighted in the green color are beaches that I would actually feel safe getting into the water or at the very least hanging out on the beach. The reason why is they're not experiencing really any dead fish or respiratory problems. So beaches that are safe to go to this weekend include pretty much every Pinellas County beach, Caldese, Clearwater Beach, Indian Shores, Madeira Beach, Treasure Island, St. Pete Beach, Pasigrill. Those beaches are safe to go to. Uh, the Carinia Brevis concentration is in the low range. So if you happen to have itchy eyes, any coughing going on, then you'd want to leave the beach pretty quickly. Uh, but for the most part, I think these beaches will be fine to go out and enjoy this weekend. Beaches that I would want to avoid are the ones that I've highlighted in the kind of orangish reddish color here. Manatee Beach, Coquina Beach, Siesta Key, Venice, Minnesota Beach, Captiva, Sanibel Island, and Fort Myers Beach. These beaches either are having some type of respiratory ailments or they have some dead fish that are washing ashore. And nobody wants to hang out, hang out at the beach with these respiratory problems, not to mention if you have asthma or any type of breathing problems. Uh, it's just not a good place to be. Additionally, if fish are dead and washing ashore, you don't want to be hanging out with that either. So these are the beaches that I would avoid. The ones that I did not highlight, Lido Key and Boca Grande, they're actually reporting no fish kill and no breathing problems, despite the fact that there is a moderate concentration of red tide off these beaches. But I would kind of leave that up to your discretion whether you'd want to visit these beaches or not. Farther south, actually getting a, a green check mark, Barefoot Beach with no respiratory or dead fish. Marco Island is kind of in that moderate range as well with no fish kill or respiratory problems. So right now, Pinellas County beaches, I think you're clear to go. Again, if you happen to observe any type of respiratory problem while you're at the beach or itchy eyes, I would go ahead and jet out of there. Also, small children going into the water, maybe instruct them. I, I know nobody goes and drinks a gallon of salt water when they go to the beach, but you kind of help, but can't help but get a little bit of the water in your mouth. Well, you, you kind of want to avoid that because the toxins in the water can actually irritate the lining of your throat and that can make you a little more prone to catching a cold or some other illness if you happen to have a more irritated throat. But again, for the most part, though, Pinellas County beaches are looking fine. All right, guys, that's the latest update on what's going on with Red Tide. Uh, Weather-wise, we're going to have afternoon storms continuing. Big shocker there. We've had storms continuous. Tampa has actually picked up over a foot of rain in the month of August, and it looks like we'll continue to see these afternoon storms developing. All right, guys, hope you have a great and safe Labor Day weekend. Feel free to comment below, and if you have any questions or comments or would be interested in me doing a, uh, a live Facebook update or even taking my drone out to the impacted areas and flying over there again, just let me know. All right, have a good weekend.